In this segment, we're going to try to cover a lot of different small fruits, including jaboticaba, loquat, Suriname cherry, kumquat, and tropical apricot. All of these fruits are gaining more and more popularity with the public and with local chefs. Of course, each of these fruits needs to be handled a little differently, but there are some general rules. Ken Love has some helpful hints. It's fairly easy to determine when jaboticaba is ripe. It's nice, dark, and purple. Um, if it's still a little red on it, you're picking them too early. Uh, with Suriname cherry, uh, the red varieties are red and the dark varieties are a dark purple to black or a very, very dark red. But generally, it's pretty easy to tell when they're ripe. Uh, kumquat, calamansi, or bright orange. Uh, loquat is, is a little tricky. Often people pick loquat when they're yellow, but the fruit goes from green to yellow and then most of them will go to orange uh, before they're fully ripe and the sugars are developed. But Jabote Cava sure is a treat. And it's just an incredibly versatile fruit for sauces, jellies, jams, syrups, mixed drinks. I mean, almost any culinary creation can be done with it. Currently, most, most local growers just throw it in a five gallon bucket, take it home, wash it, put it in a box, and take it to whoever their customers are. Uh, the Jabote Cava has a, normally has a shelf life under those circumstances of only three or four days before it starts to deteriorate. If you put it into the chill right away in the field under the tree, you can get up to a week of shelf life. This makes a big difference for grocery store produce departments and for the chefs who are going to utilize the fruit. One thing to remember when harvesting Jabote Cava is not to package it in the same height as a, as a five gallon bucket. You want to put it in smaller containers like this and get it into this pre-chilled -chilled cooler box. Oh, there's a one that is a little bit too red. So this is about, about three inches in height and for Jabote Cava that's about as much as you can squeeze in. Small fruit tend to be more fragile because of thin skinned or uh, just the seed structure. Uh, the weight, some, some small fruit that are heavier uh, can compress the fruit underneath it, which is why you'd want to keep it in um, uh, layers of just one or two, like tropical apricot. As soon as you put that third level on top in a box, the bottom fruit gets compressed and starts to leak. In the case of very ripe Suriname cherry or very ripe Mysore or berries, or thimble berries, we'll, we'll often put a, a piece of napkin on the bottom, just like you see in commercial berries that you would buy in the store from, the, from other locations. Uh, that helps protect the fruit, cushions it a little bit from being bounced around. Another thing to remember with some small fruit, like calamansi or kumquats, people don't want to buy large quantities of them. So we use the small half pint uh, clamshells just to package four, five, six fruit in one little box makes it convenient for them. Yeah, I, I know it's a waste of, of plastic and materials and it's not exactly green, but we offer choices. And we have found at the farmers markets here that people still tend to get packaged fruit rather than reaching into a basket and, and, and buying and picking out one here and one there. And they only want one or two, that's a different story. So we offer a choice. And we sterilize and recycle a, a lot of the clamshell packaging. With all the small fruit, we have to be careful to, to only give our customers the best possible quality. So it's essential to, to cull the fruit once or twice, three times to be sure, to make sure that there's no skin damage, no insects. Um, currently with the ant problems we have in Hawaii, you want to make sure around the, the stem end of the fruit that the ants haven't made a nest, or at the bottom end, like with guava, We'll make sure that the ants haven't made a home in there. You know, on the mainland, when, they, uh, when the apples, peaches, plums flower, they'll know within three, four days when they're going to harvest. We don't know if we're going to have one crop a year or five crops a year. So we have to monitor our trees. We have to watch them.
Well, we're at the mercy of, of the, the weather and a host of other climatic conditions. And with all these microclimates on, the, on, on Hawaii, um, the difference of ele in elevation between one farm and the next also plays a, a part.